Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. Our subject this week is authority, Colin. You made the point yesterday that many churches today don't understand the biblical view of authority, which is why they lack power. You also mentioned yesterday that those in secular authority have no spiritual authority because that comes from God. So it's very, very important that we understand this properly. Yes, it is. And we were <clears throat> having a look yesterday at the nature of the spiritual authority that God gives to every believer. Now, let's look at the uh, the way in which we're to exercise that authority. I, I said that um, we have to be under the authority of God in order to be able to be in authority as believers. Now, uh, we also have seen that it's not just we as individual believers, but the church needs to be under the authority of God because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And if we take that uh, in the context of the local church. He is to be head of the local church. Everybody in that local church is to be subject, therefore, to his authority. Now, what does that mean in practice? Three things. Two of them are relatively straightforward. The third is a little more complicated. First of all, we have to be subject to the authority of God's word. There is a crisis in many denominations at this time because there is great conflict as to the nature of the authority of God's word. To go against the authority of God's word is, biblically speaking, rebellion against God. I can't dress it up. I can't make it appear any less significant than it is. To prefer reason to faith in God's word is rebellion against God. It is man saying, never mind what God says, we think differently. Uh, scripture is the revelation of God, of what he has done in Christ. What to God is righteous and what to God is sinful. And if something was sinful to God when the Bible was written, it's still sinful to God today. God does not change. His views of what is right and wrong never change. Now, this does not mean we have a legalistic approach to the Scriptures. It means simply that we recognize the authority of Scripture as being the Word of God, and therefore this is, if you like, the plumb line of our relationships, of our actions, and of our decisions. That we check out what we believe by the Word of God. We check out what we say, what we do, the way we relate, the decisions we make in the body of Christ as well as the personal decisions we make by the Word of God. Where there is not subjection to the authority of God's Word, I repeat again, that is rebellion against God. Now, rebellion against God is, is uh, very, very significant, and I'm going to talk about that uh, tomorrow. But secondly, we have to be subject to the authority of the Holy Spirit. Now, that means we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not given us simply for us to use in spiritual gifts, nor just to um, enable something of the character of God to be expressed in our lives. Both of those things, of course, are aspects of the work of the Holy Spirit. But what Jesus concentrated on when he was talking to the, the disciples at the Last Supper about the promise of the Holy Spirit is that he is the Spirit of truth who guides us into all the truth. He is the one who leads us in the way that God wants us to go. In other words, God expresses his authority through the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, this raises a very important issue. How do we know? How can we be sure and certain 
as to what is or is not the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And this is where, again, we have to check out things with the Word, because the Word of God and the Spirit of God will never disagree. Jesus, scripturally, is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And there is no division within God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit always act in perfect unity and harmony. So the Holy Spirit will never lead us to do something that is contrary to the Word of God. Therefore, if somebody claims a revelation from the Holy Spirit, it is always the outworking of the Word of God. It can always be checked out by the Word of God. And if it is not in line and in accord, in unity with the Word of God, then that so-called revelation needs to be dismissed as being something that has not come from the Holy Spirit, but from some, some kind of contrary spirit. It is, in other words, a form of deception. But we as individual believers and as congregations of God's people are to be led by the Holy Spirit. The responsibility, therefore, of leadership is to know what the word of the Spirit, what the strategy of the Spirit is, as well as the vision that the Holy Spirit is giving to that church. The Holy Spirit will give us the strategy. That is, he will give us each step of the way. He will show us what we are to do next to enable us to fulfill the vision that God has given that congregation. Now, of course, without vision, the people perish. They cast off restraint. There is no exercise of authority. There is no spiritual power in that congregation. So it's very important that as believers, we are subject to the word of God. We are subject to the spirit of God. Then thirdly, and here's the thorny one, we also have to be subject to the spiritual leadership that God has put in place. Now, this is where I want everybody to listen to me very, very carefully. Because I said on Monday that a person's position does not give him authorities. All authority comes from God. So if a person is in leadership in a church, the way to exercise leadership is for him to be so subject to the authority of God that, in effect, God can lead that church through that person and that group of people that form the leadership of that church. So you should never have a church leadership meeting while people sit around a table wondering what to do. It has got to come from revelation from the Holy Spirit. And a true spiritual leader is someone who will be able to stand up and say, the Lord is saying, the Lord is saying this, that, and the other. And of course, that has been checked out with the other leaders, and he is speaking on behalf of the corporate leadership who are of one heart and one mind. This is the way in which the Lord wants us to walk. Now, that is, that is the exercise of true spiritual authority. And where you are part of a church where that kind of spiritual authority is exercised, then everybody has to be subject to that delegated authority because God has put those leaders in place in order to lead his people. You see, if you've got a hundred people in a church, the Holy Spirit will not lead those hundred people in a hundred different directions. He will lead them all in one direction. Now, I don't know why we find this so difficult to understand in the church, because if you think about it, there can only be one direction in a business. There can only be one direction in a school. There can only be one direction in the army or in one of the armed forces. You've got to have leadership that is leading everybody towards a common goal and a common purpose. You can't have everybody in a business doing their own thing and not taking any notice of their bosses. You can't have troops that say, well, I want to draw pay as a soldier, but I'm not going to obey the officers that are over me. I mean, that is anarchy. That would be anarchy. And the problem in many churches is there's a spiritual anarchy. Everybody wants to be his own oracle. Everybody says, well, the Holy Spirit is telling me to do this. No, the Holy Spirit is telling me to do that. The Holy Spirit is telling me to do something else. You see, and there's no real cohesive 
plan and purpose being worked out in the church because there isn't submission to the spiritual authority in that church. Is it your experience, however, Colin, that where the leadership are truly submitted to God and carry God's spirit, that they persuade the church without too much difficulty? Yes. uh, I've had very, very few um, instances in my own personal experience where people have questioned or gone against my authority. Now, that doesn't mean it can't happen. Uh, It happened to Moses. (laughs) It certainly happened to Jesus. It happened to Paul. It happened to all the apostles. Um, that actually to be in a place of the highest authority that God can can give to man, the highest spiritual authority, which is to be an apostle, uh, means that you actually are, are speaking for God, really. I mean, you, you, you are God's authority figure. And therefore, you've only got to have disobedient people, rebellious people, deceived people, uh, people who are living in unbelief in the congregation, and they will go or desire to go against your authority, um, just as they did against Jesus, just as they did against Paul and Peter and all the other apostles. So, um, you know, that's sort of par for the course. And what, when you're in that kind of leadership, what you recognize is it's not really you the people are going against, but it's the Lord's authority in you. Uh, So it's a very dangerous thing to do, to go against the Lord's authority. But unfortunately, some people do, and when they do, they're in a place of rebellion, not obedience. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 